Okay, so this is how to make this little chicken. And the kit that you have comes with enough material to make two. And maybe even three if you do it a little bit smaller. So I'm going to show you how to make the needle felted chicken kit from Needle Felted Fuzzies. Let's get started. We'll put this one over here for now. The first shape that we're going to do is this one here. It's the body shape. It includes the head and the tail. So we're going to kind of make a boat. In order to do that, you need some of the white wool that is in your pack. So if you have you know, your entire pack of white, we're going to pull that in half and we're going to start with that. When you're needle felting, you want to start with just a little bit and add more to it. It's much easier that way rather than trying to remove some once you've already gotten it together. Also in your pack, you'll have one or two uh, needles. These are 36 gauge triangle needles, which means that this, the working part of the needle, which is down here, is actually triangular shaped and where the sides of the triangle meet, there's little divots cut into it and that those are the hooks that grab the fibers and make them stick together and start to make the wool more dense. So what we're going to do is we start with what we call the basic roll. The tighter this is, the less stabbing you're going to have to do. So what I like to do is just start on one end. So you have a little bit of white. I'm going to start that again. Start at one end and I'm working away from me. So I'm going to roll nice and tight. I'm leaving the edges kind of fuzzy for right now. And what you can start to do is fold it in and roll. But as you can see, this is going to be not enough. So this is just the first roll and we're almost going to make the whole shape, the whole the length of it. Anyway, we're going to take our needle and we're going to stab into it. This is why it's important to have a foam or, um, some kind of spongy base, either an old pillow or some burlap with some rice in it or something because the working part of the needle needs to be able to go through the piece that you're working on. So say this is a really small piece and, would, and this was just a table, you wouldn't be able to get that whole piece through what you're working on. So you need to be able to stick through it. So when I'm stabbing, it actually stabs all the way through the piece. That way that working part of the needle actually does a job, which is why the needles are the most important part of needle felting. So I'm just going to always stab down towards the pad or the felt or the foam or whatever you have, the pillow, but I'm not going to stab this so it's so dense like the, like the finished product because I'm going to add more to it. And if you're making these really dense, it's a lot more difficult to stab more wool onto it. So right now we have just a basic, it looks like, I don't know, <laughs> just a, a cylinder. So we're, we're stabbing all the way around it, just kind of loosely though. We don't want it to be too dense, so this is still very pliable. Now we're going to take another piece. I like to stretch them out just a little bit so that they are about the same density all the way through. I'm going to put that piece on the pad and then I'm going to take the piece I was just working on and then you can stab it a couple of times just to get it stuck on there. And then I'm going to roll this as well. I'm pulling back towards me so that it makes the piece, the extra wool that we just added on there, tighter so it will have less stabbing to do. As I'm doing this piece though, I'm starting to get that U shape. So I'm looking to let this edge start to point up a little bit. So I'm going to stab across the middle. And then this piece, I'm going to just use my fingers, hold it in place, and stab that. So this is how we start to get some shape into this piece. Again, I'm still not finishing with the edge because I'm not done with it yet. This is the side that I'm going to make the more pointy tail end. So I'm going to stab that more into a cone shape. 
I'm flipping it over. I've got some debris in my wool, so I'm just pulling that off. And you can see how this part here is fuzzy. That's just where the, the end of the wool is. So I'm going to gently put that where I want it with my fingers and then stab it into place. And again, I'm keeping that shape where the tail is more up. So you can stab it, you can hold it with your left hand, I'm right-handed, and kind of push it into the pad and stab into the pad and just keep it moving, especially because this is sort of rounded. If you wanted something flat, you just stab it flat. But because this is rounded, we want to stab and turn. That way it will stay symmetrical. It will get felted evenly. My mantra, you'll start hearing me say it, stab, 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 turn, stab, 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 turn, stab, 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 turn. All right, so I'm going to just keep that shape that I want with my fingers. So I'm letting it wrap around my thumb and I'm using my middle finger in this case to kind of put it where I want. But I'm stabbing down towards the mat, not anywhere towards my fingers because I don't want to hurt myself. So we have that starting to come together. It's still a little small, so I'm not gonna finish felting this. And by finish, I just mean get it to a density where I'm gonna stop. So you can still see it's fuzzy. If I pinch it, there's still pieces coming off. That's, that's a good gauge. So I'm going to continue stabbing the rest of this now. Stab, I'm holding this so that it keeps that shape. This side, if we look at the finished one, you can see it's like a, it's almost like a U with a flat bottom, but this side's not as pointy as this side. But even if we're stabbing this newer one and we're stabbing it into place and it does get a little pointy, that's okay because when we add this part, when we add this these other colors, it's going to flatten it out. So if it's starting to look a little pointy, that's okay. It will flatten out as we add more of the pieces. So go for more pointy rather than not, I suppose. Again, we're stabbing, stabbing, stabbing. And we're keeping it moving. Now I'm stabbing in this way a little bit because I want the wool to go that way. The direction of the needle determines the direction of the wool. So I'm going to stab down so that the wool is going down. If I stab this way, the wool is going this way. Again, I'm going to keep it rounded, so it almost looks like this, but I'm down, doing it down towards the mat. Let's do a quick check. First, I'm going to stab the bottom, just to flatten that out a little bit. Again, this is still very flexible, because I'm going to add another piece. But you can see it's starting to come together. So at this point, this is pretty much what you want it to look like. It's starting to get that U shape. And I'm going to go ahead and grab another piece. Actually, if we look at this one too, this is the piece where I finished the sizing, but I didn't uh, add any colors just so you could see what this looks like. So you can see it's a lot thicker than this one. So I'm gonna continue adding more wool. So again, if you, you get some of that white fluffy wool, I like to draft it out so that you have a piece that's a little bit longer and thinner to use especially when we're doing this part, which is just wrapping it. So the you can do it this way, but because it is shaped, I actually like to hold the piece in my hand now that it's bigger. I pinch it with my thumb and then I wrap, I'm kind of dragging it out and wrapping it around the piece with my hand. And then I'm gonna stab that into place. Just gently for now. I want to just build up this body piece before I really start to get it finished. Okay, so this is the pointy end. I'm really just using my hands to put it where I want it and then stabbing it into place. You can start to hear the needle going into the wool because it's starting to get more dense. Okay. So the piece that I'm working on, I usually have 
I'm righty, so I usually point it towards the right. And I have in my head right now, this is definitely the pointy end. This side, you can still see the, uh, the curvy pieces. That's okay for now. That is the head side. It does not need to be as defined of an arc as the other side. But again, if it becomes a little bit more pointy, that's okay. I'm going to stab into it because I want the wool to go that way. Stab this in the center a little bit. And again, we still have a little bit more left to do. I'm going to focus on just the middle and the head for this next piece. Add that on. And because we're just adding a smaller layer to a piece that's already more defined, you, you'll find that you don't need to stab as much. So that first piece we had to stab quite a bit because it was just getting started. The second piece, not as much. The third piece and, and additional ones, you really don't need to stab nearly as much. This piece here is nice and fuzzy. I'm going to keep it rounded on the head because that's that seems to be working for this one. But I'm pushing my thumb in here to make it more rounded. I'm going to make sure that the bottom part where it sits is flat. Now this one's a little bit more defined than my finished one just so you can tell what I'm doing here. But again, it sits by itself. So flat bottom, but only where the body is, not the head or the tail. I'm gonna finish up that tail a little bit. So I'm, point, I'm holding that off to the right and I'm putting my fingers as far left as possible. So that way I really minimize the possibility of stabbing my fingers. Okay, so that the tail is pretty good, but I would like to more to add up some volume here in the center. So again, I'm going to take another piece, draft it out a bit, and then I'm going to wrap it once around the middle and then really focus on the head. And stab that into place. I don't need the needle to go all the way through to the pad. Now that this is thicker, I really only need, and we're all just adding another piece, so I really only need this piece to get felted onto this piece. So it does not need to go all the way through. Just needs, the needle just needs to go through the top layer and enough into the piece to hold it together. So at this point, I'd probably say it's going in, I mean, the whole needle is going, the whole working part of the needle is going into my piece. So it's probably about halfway through the chicken. You can see that really, because I added more wool here, it's starting to make that tail part disappear a little bit. So I'm just gonna go back over it with my fingers holding it into place. I'm just going to make sure that I am felting the entire additional layer on here. So I have to go over the whole thing. Again, flat bottom. Rounded head. Kind of pointed up. I think this will match well with this one, so I'm going to stop it here. But if you wanted to build yours up a little bit more, then you go right ahead. You can use all of the wool in the pack to make one bigger chicken. Or if you want to stick with me and do two that are about this size, then feel free to do that as well. I like doing two in kits because 
the first one is always like, oh man, what did I just do? <laughs> is this right? Now you get a feel for the material. And then when you do the second one, it comes out better usually. So I have one that ends up ended up kind of looking like a teardrop where from this angle, it's a little bit thinner here than it is down here. But no two chickens are the same. I'm just going to stab the base a little bit more. But I think we're ready to move on so that I can make a mate to this one. The next thing that we're going to do is the beak. I like doing the beak instead of the wattle uh, or the fringe first because this really helps me line up everything else. So I'm going to add the beak and then the wattle and then the eyes and then the crown so that I can get it right in the, in the top in between the eyes. So I'm going to get my yellow wool, which is hidden around here somewhere. Here we go. And I'm going to put the piece that I'm working on to the side. So you can see the, the tiny amount of piece that I have here. It's not even as long as my finger. But I'm going to start doing that same exact thing that we started with the chicken body. You can see how long it is. What I like to do is fold up, not all the way in half, but about three quarters up. That way this side is going to be longer or thicker than this side, and you'll start to get a better beak shape. And then I'm going to keep, keep rolling. And then I'm going to hold it on one end, and because this is thin, I'm just going to stab it into the pad, pull it up, twist it, Stab, 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 turn. Pull and turn. Pull and turn. And then I'm going to flip it to the other side so that the needle can work on the other end without getting my fingers. Once it gets stuck into the pad, just pull it off and flip it. If yours is starting to get too big, <laughs> You can see this one looks a little bit large. It's actually harder to make smaller pieces. So I'm going to try to get this to get a little bit smaller. But if I'm still finding that this is too big, I'm going to stab in from the bottom, from the base. I don't like doing that so much because I do want this end to be a little bit fuzzy so that when I attach it, it will actually attach cleanly and smoothly with no seams. I'm very carefully stabbing, pulling out and stabbing in without pulling the needle all the way out. In between my fingers because my fingers are pinching and keeping that cone shape. It's like an ice cream cone we're building. So stab, 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 turn, stab, 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 turn. And I just want it to get to a place where it will hold its shape. You can see it's still a little fuzzy. That's okay. This is wool that we're working with. I might stab it just a little bit more until I start to get a little bit of resistance. I'm going to twist it in my fingers. There we go. Now I'm going to take my chicken and look at it head on. And I'm not going to put it in the middle, I'm going to put it just slightly up from the center. I'm going to take my needle and at a 45 degree angle where the beak meets the head or the body, I'm going to stab it together. And I'm going to go around and do that all around the base of the beak. And then I'm also going to point my needle a little bit further than 45 degrees just so that I can get my needle end up going this way inside in the middle here. There we go. And I can finish up some of the needle felting while it's on the head. I know it looks kind of silly right now, but it, that is what we want. <laughs> now we're going to, let's do the eyes next. I'm going to take the black. I'm going to take a little tiny bit in my fingers. I mean, it's, it's not much at all. 
and I'm actually going to pull that in two. The tighter you hold wool, the harder it's going to be to pull apart. So hold it gently and pull it in two. And then I'm going to roll these between my fingers. I'm going to put one down and I'm going to put one on the chicken. Above the beak, so we're going up towards the tail end, the pointy end. And a little over to the side. I'm going to stab that in place, but not a lot. And then I'm going to try to do this this way so you can see you're working. The other one there. Now that I have both on, now I can push it with my needle just ever so slightly without having to pull it off and redo the whole thing. And now this one went in a little bit more than this one, so I'm just going to stab that one in a little bit more until they're about even. And now we have two eyes. So again, bring up the finished one. All the wool comes in from different locations and they're different batches and they all look a little bit different. So this was actually one that I, I made this chicken last year and I had a different supplier at that time. Her yellow was much brighter than this yellow, but that's okay. Again, all chickens are unique. So now we're done with the yellow, we're done with the black, so we can put that over to the side. Now we're going to work on the red pieces. So we have red, I'm going to pull off a tiny little piece, about the same as what we did for the eyes. And then this, I'm just, but basically, because it's so small, I can't really roll it on the pad. It's, like, impossible. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to fold it, and then roll it. And I'm wrapping this piece around the center. And then I can stab that into the pad. And with my needle, I'm just going to sort of try to shape it into a teardrop shape. I'm going to lift it off the pad, flip it over. I'm using my fingers and my needle. And <laughs> independently, but together. I'm rolling it kind of all over the pad. And I'm stabbing it. And then I'm going to twist it in my fingers into that teardrop shape. And I'm going to place it on the side of the beak. And I'm going to stab it into the base of the beak. Now this is still really nice and fluffy. I can play with it. I can lay it down how I want. I can you know, make it curvy. I can put it underneath, whatever. Um, so you can see this one's a little bit bigger than this one. Again, all chickens are unique. And this one I put basically just underneath. This one I put on top. You could do either one. And then we need the crown piece here. This is the most difficult, <laughs> but we will get through it. So on this one, oops, I just hit the thing again. Sorry about that. On this one, you can see that it has one, two, three, four little humps. And it's sort of thick. And then I just stabbed it right into the head, right into this piece. This is the finishing touch. So in order to make that piece, what I like to do is take a, a piece of red. And this one is about, I don't know, maybe two fingers thick. So maybe an inch. And it's about as long as my fingers. And instead of rolling, I'm actually going to fold it so that, I don't know if you can see that, but I'm basically, here, I'll stab it. You don't have to do this part. I'm going to stab it where I'm going to fold it. I'm going to fold this up just so you can see it. Okay. And then I'm going to do that again. And then I'm going to stab it into the pad. So this is the part you do want to do just in the center though. Now we're going to shape it with our needle stuck into the pad or the, the pillow or whatever you're using. So I'm using the needle to bring up these ends. And then I'm going to bring down. So I'm just using my needle and pushing it down here. I'm going to wrap the ends. And now it doesn't look like it yet, but it is starting to come together. I promise. I'm stabbing the whole thing. Then I'm going to pull it off the pad, flip it over, stab the, just the base a little bit. And I made this very large because as we felt it, it gets smaller. 
and I'm going to start to use my my fingers, my needle to shape it. You can do it this way if you're feeling brave. What I do is I, I hold it upright. I use my needle on the side. I do not pull it all the way out because then you're very much more likely to stab yourself. But I put it here and I just kind of go up and down because it will work its way in right where I want a peak and a little valley. So again, over here, we'll see how many this one ends up having. That's very dramatic, but we're going to fill everything into place. So I'm actually going to start trying to get the wool to go towards the center, which will thicken it up and it will make it smaller. So I am really just pushing on one end and I'm going to, I'm using my finger to kind of keep it into place. And because I'm pin pinching the bottom, it's going to start making the top go a little bit wide. So right in here, I can see I'm starting to get a little bit of a fourth bump. So perfect. So just keep my needle in those little pits, the valleys, pushing it towards me, stabbing everywhere stabbing towards the center. So I'm, what I'm doing is, it looks like I'm stabbing right into the pad, because I, I am, uh, but really what I'm trying to do is get this area here to felt up. I'm going to carefully pull this off my foam pad or my sponge. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. Again, it's still a little bit too long, so I'm trying to get it. Again, the wool goes where the needle is pointed, so I'm going to Try to work on pointing my needle towards the center, and you can see I'm getting my fingers out of the way. Okay. Pull this up. See, it's still a little bit big. I'm just gonna keep working on this for a little bit longer. So I'm stabbing it towards where I want it to go without rolling it onto itself like that was trying to do. And then we can finish felting it on the piece. So I'm going to put my chicken down on the pad. I'm looking at it sideways. And what I think I'm going to end up doing here with this one is stabbing from here to here. I'm gonna try to stab it so that it, well, I will. I will stab it so that it curves. I'm gonna start and place it right in between those eyes. And I'm gonna stab it right there. So I'm going from both sides. And maybe a little bit on the center. So now you can see just the front part is attached. Now I'm gonna kind of switch gears and go to the back. I'm gonna take my needle right from the back and I can put this where I want it. The softer your piece is, the more flexible you'll be able to have it without it creasing like that. So I'm just going to look again, and it's probably going to be somewhere about here. Stab. I'm going to stab it. I'm rolling this over so I can see it. Stab the whole thing. And I'm just going to make a line. So I'm going from here. Stab, 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 stab. Flip it over. Stab, 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 stab. Stab into it a little bit too. So I'm going from the back kind of up into the center. And there we go. Now we have two little chickens. And hopefully you have one or maybe this is the second time through and you have two. I do suggest that you watch this video all the way through or any kind of tutorial videos. I suggest watching all the way through before you try it. That way you can see what's coming up and you kind of know what, what you're in for. Now, I do want to mention a couple of things. You know how we had that, that swirly looking bit in the front? I never fully got rid of one little crease right here. So what I'm gonna do is just lift up. I've got to kind of pinch hard to lift it up. And I'm gonna do this on my pad, but I'm gonna show you close up. And then I'm gonna just wrap it right on top. I'm gonna to stab that into place. Again, stab this into your pad. You'll have much more stability. And then that disappears. So if you have any issues with seams, just kind of grab it, roll it on top, 
gently place it where you want. And voila. If you have any questions whatsoever, do not hesitate to reach out to me. The best way to do that is through email, and the best way to find that is on my website, needlefeltedfuzzies.com. Thank you so much for watching.